let's talk about the jelly art style. The jelly art style is an art style that gained popularity on TikTok. You probably heard of it. And because of the popularity it gained, a lot of people began to dislike the art style and call it repetitive. Um, they began to come after artists such as at Miss Misty. I'll just put it on the screen because I can't pronounce these. Um, these three artists in particular. And today I'm actually here to defend this art style. And before I go ahead and defend it, like I say I'm going to, there are some major things that I need to acknowledge. Um, prior to researching this video, I had some art block and so I was very much off of art TikTok. And during my hiatus, this controversy exploded, which I'm just finding out just finding out about today. And the artist at Pierrica, I believe is how you say it. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Um, the username will be on the screen anyway, has gotten some controversy for attacking somebody who allegedly was copying her art style. This caused controversy because prior to this, Pierrica had posted many tutorials on how to draw like her. And as to not drag myself into this controversy, I will just say that to get mad at somebody for following the tutorials that you yourself posted is wild. And if you're gonna post tutorials, don't get mad at people for following them. Not to come after her because I do understand there is a frustration when people heavily reference you and don't give you credit. But from my understanding, this person followed the tutorials and then Purika then began to denounce this person, which I think is a bit silly. I'm not going to go and say anything bad about this artist because I truly believe it was out of a place of frustration as opposed to just being a bad person. And I just think that that needs to be addressed before I go in and talk about how to draw in this art style and all the stuff surrounding this art style. If somebody, to be honest, if somebody heavily referenced my artwork with proper credit, I'm going to put that in there with proper credit, I would be flattered and not upset, but that's just me. Um, it might be different for other people, but in my opinion, if you heavily reference my art, I'm not going to come for you and I'm not going to call you out and stuff like that. I just think that's a bit extreme. That's enough about the most recent controversy. I wanted to talk about why do people dislike the art style itself? I can talk about the artists who are the ones who get the most flack for this art style, but I need to discuss why the art style itself is so hated. It seems to be hated because people think that it's unexpressive and it's just drawing the same pouty East Asian girl over and over. I'm just gonna say that this is so stupid. People who say this are very much giving those I'm not like the other girls Tumblr posts like what do you want a cookie? Like I don't understand. Y'all want to be different so bad. Like just because the art style is popular doesn't mean number one you need to hate on it and number two it's bad because this art style takes so much like knowledge to achieve it is a very hard art style and a very good art style might i add that i think is beautiful and the, i noticed that the people who majority hate on this art style are probably coming from a place of jealousy because you know damn well you okay you know damn well that if they could draw like that they would have been defending this art style but i truly believe that because they are jealous and they feel that they are inferior they are projecting that inferiority on to other artists who are getting popular on tiktok that's another thing it also probably comes from a place of frustration with tiktok because 
these artists who do this art style are going viral and others are just not and people are jealous people are jealous that their art is not going as viral as these jelly art style tiktok artists art which is so stupid because don't hate on the people who are popular just because they're popular that's such a pick me behavior i'm sorry i'm gonna say it you're not special okay just because you don't have the tiktok jelly art style doesn't mean that you are better and that the other people are inferior okay and i genuinely believe that this art style can be as expressive as any other art style and that's what i came to prove today because this art style i believe is more of a rendering style as opposed to a drawing style i believe you can draw any features you want and have any type of sketch you want and still have the jelly art style it's not of it's not a fit inside the lines thing there are very specific things that these artists do to achieve that jelly look in quote in quotations because it's just people People are so critical about this art style when in reality, it's not a matter of lack of expression. It's a matter of the artists who are primarily popular for this art style. I truly believe you can draw any expression, any face, any face shape, any proportions you want and you can still make the jelly art style people who are saying that it's just east asian girls who look like they just cried is completely wrong in my opinion and so i'm going to prove that today by showing some examples of me drawing with many different features many different skin tones many different expressions and just a tutorial in general on the art style hey guys so i have been meaning to make a tutorial on the jelly art style because i have a lot of mutuals with this style and it's very popular so i'm just gonna walk you through my process i've never done this like in real time i usually do voiceovers but i feel like it's more genuine if it's real time so i have this sketch here and i basically i made it after the jelly art style typically they draw characters with wolf cuts really big eyes this is the stereotypical jelly art style style i guess so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a base color and to start off I'm just going to do a generic example so just a pretty pale skin tone it's kind of yellowy and I'm just going to fill that in and this is just my process and what I usually do, but I'm going to go to gradient map and I'm going to select one that's kind of blue and kind of gray. I'm gonna start with this, but I'm gonna make some adjustments. So I'm gonna go in and do a darker color and maybe like a more red. And we're gonna spread this out a little more to make a purple so like something like this about i think that's okay maybe a little bit more red so we basically created this purple shade and we're gonna set the layer to multiply and what that does is it makes everything the layer on top kind of match the layer on the bottom. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to blend out the sketch a little 
because blending out the sketch gives a softer appearance which is a very big thing in this art style very soft features so i'm going to blend out the stuff like the lash line and the lips i'm going to do a little blending on the neck as well You can already see it coming together actually really fast. So once that's blended out, we're then going to go here and create a new layer. And on this layer, we're going to select a pink and we're going to add blush on the nose lips i'm gonna turn up the opacity on this brush lips eyes and cheeks like that and what i like to do so it's not so harsh i like to turn down the opacity just a little bit so that you're not your drawing doesn't look like a tomato and i'll merge that layer down below and I'm just going to blend that out like so. And as you can see, this is already coming together like a jelly art style. For the eyes, I'm going to use this tan shade. It's actually darker than the skin tone that I chose, which is interesting. But trust the process because it'll all come together in the end. Typically, I like to use brown eyes. I'm just not a fan of drawing blue eyes, but you can really do any color you want. I'm just gonna show brown because I am a fan of brown eyes. Just to make things look less unfinished, I'm going to go in and fill in the hair. I'm just going to do a quick color in. I'm using a purpley brown shade because I find that adding a color into like a hue into the shade of brown adds a lot of character and adds a lot of shine to the hair, especially with highlights. With dark hair, like black hair, I definitely recommend using black, or not black, blue for uh, highlights. And usually they have characters with dyed hair. I'm going to do a little bit of pink. I think that would be a cute touch. But only on the end, so I'm not gonna go all the way into the hair with this blue or pink I meant. I don't know why I got blue. I'm gonna blend that out so it's not looking so strange. So this is what we're working with so far. And the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer and I'm gonna set it to multiply. And when I do that, I'm going to select the skin tone and I'm going to make it slightly darker and slightly grayer. What this does is it gives off a less red appearance by changing it to slightly gray. I like that color, so I'm gonna go in and just add shadows to places that are affected by shadow so under the nose under the chin under the lips and i like to add it to the under eye so that it gives the appearance of a cell and we are going to just add a little bit to the sides of the face as well like that I'm going to merge that layer down below and I'm going to blend it out a little bit. Okay, so this is a great base. So now we're going to create a layer on top of the sketch. And this is where we're going to start adding highlights. 
So we're going to select the skin tone and we're going to go a little bit lighter and we're going to add highlights in spots like over here. So on the nose, under the eyes, on the chin and above the lips here. These I would say are a good spot to start and then if you want to add more highlights you can go in and add more. This is where we're going to start to make everything much more clear and less muddy. So across the middle of the face I'm just getting rid of that redness because we want the redness to be primarily on the tip of the nose and the cheeks. So around here. And a very important thing with this art style is to keep everything nice and smooth. And if you do have any harsh lines, make sure they're very thought out so that it doesn't look like messy, I guess. Okay, so now I'm going to begin on the lips. The lips are a big part of the style because you want them to be nice and juicy. You want them to look very full and luxurious. So we're going to take the skin tone and kind of blend it into the lip a little bit. And I'm going to take this pink. Usually I make my lips a little more red, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep them relatively pink. And you're going to just add darker reds and pinks to the middle while keeping the outside corners fairly light. And this gives the appearance of fullness. I also like to make sure everything is nice and pronounced here. So like this spot here, I like to make sure is nice and defined. But you also want to for it to have that softness. So I also go in and soften up the line. You want to be able to see it, but you want it to be soft at the same time, if that makes sense. So a lot of things are starting to come together here, which is fabulous, but I want to brighten up the mid face a little more, so like right here, because with too much blush, I find that it can get a bit muddy. So I'm going to take the highlight color and just go in to the center here. Another thing that can really help with the pouty appearance is to create shadows right on the sides of the mouth here like I'm doing and this gives the uh, um, again the illusion of fuller lips another very big aspect to this art style is the eyes so the eyes in the style are very soft and blended so I like to select an in-between shade between the whites of the eyes and the pupil and I just blend it out like so. 
and then after that I select an in-between shade of that and I blend it out even more making sure to keep everything relatively smooth like so and once I do that I take a purpley blue and I fill in the whites of the eyes that are remaining so right here and that is how I add the whites of the eyes making to making sure to keep them nice and bright and not and not lost and then just the cornea you can blend out the cornea I don't always do it but I definitely recommend so this is what we're working with so far and here comes the biggest biggest step of this art style which is to take white pure white and add a reflection this adds so much shine to the eyes you have no idea then we're just going to go in with eyelashes eyelashes are pretty regular in this style the only thing i would say would be to lower the opacity of your brush because that will give the wispy effect when you are drawing the eyelashes now it's time for the under eyes and with that i just take the um, highlight color and i just create a outline right here and since we added shadows there with the multiply layer from the beginning there's no real need to add um shadows unless you really really want to because the shadow was already created right here and now the most crucial crucial part of this art style the most important thing you're gonna create a new layer and you're gonna set it to add basically what an add layer does is it creates a lighter color of the colors underneath so I'm gonna select a I'm gonna select the skin tone and I'm just going to add highlights highlights is one of the most important parts of this art style hands down it's what gives it the jelly effect especially on the lips you want to make sure that they're highlighted well because it will give a juicy finish and I'm gonna blend that out a little so it's not so harsh. And then same with the top lip. It's already looking so much more juicy. Now, I'm also going to go back in and make more lower eyelashes because it is very important to the style in my opinion, to add lower lashes. And with those lower lashes, I'm gonna go back to the add layer and I'm going to add in between the lashes some highlights. This is big for the style. And if you want to blend that out, you can blend that out. I think I'm just going to leave it. 
and I'm also going to work on the upper eyelashes as well. If you really want to go wild, you can go back on the ad layer and use it to create even more highlights, which I do recommend if it really needs that boost, but I don't think it's necessarily always required. So like on these parts, the chin, 100%. And I'm gonna blend out the nose highlight as well because you don't want it to be too harsh. Same with the face highlights. Remember that all the brushes that I'm using are in um, the description of this video. They're on my Etsy. And I just blend this out. And lastly, I'm going to add back the beauty marks that I added here. So this is what we're working with so far, which is very nice. And with the neck, you just want to highlight the middle of it. And keep the shadows on the sides. Multiply and add layers are going to be your best friend. So create a layer above the base colors. And you're just going to set it to add or multiply. And you're going to go like this. Adding shadows to the hair. And I would recommend keeping your brush very thick because if you make your brush too thin, it will end up looking really stringy and not like hair. This is bothering me. I notice this. Once you have that, go into the add layer, create an add layer, and basically add highlights to places that highlights should be. So boom. Then I'm going to merge those layers and I'm essentially going to go to my top layer, my render layer, and just fill everything out. Add some wispy pieces, blend some things, make sure everything looks good. Bring some of that pink up. And add, I'm gonna add some flyaways. And I would say this is a rundown on the jelly art style. Now that we've established how to render in this style, I'm going to show how this style can be diverse. So I have a couple different um, expressions here and I'm going to um, use different skin tones and the different expressions and the different face shapes and still use the jelly art style. I don't get why people say that this art style is unexpressive because there's so much you can do with it. I feel like it's all up to how you use the art style versus the art style itself because you can do so many things with it and it has a lot of potential and I think people who hate the art style because it's not diverse quote unquote is really silly. I think it's really silly because another thing is these artists also draw people with multiple skin tones. The argument that it's just East Asian girls who 
are pouting is really dumb because on multiple occasions these artists draw people of color repeatedly it's in their regular cycle of drawing it's not a one and done thing like every once in a while to keep people happy they'll draw a person of color this is in their regular cycle of drawing so i also think that's kind of stupid um so yeah